Greetings. Brother Elder, Black Light. Today is Friday. Is it the 13th? I don't know who's counting anyway. But we are in the month of uh, Savior's Day. Here we have Brother Sinetta. Now, I've been uh, critical of Brother Sarnetta. Got to give him a, a holla holla because he's on it on this, on, this, on this video right here. This last video he made, he's on it. I'm going to let you uh, check out what he's saying. But it's, it's, a, it's some things I, I got to say. Because brothers ain't getting it about Malcolm, Brother Malcolm. See, I know, I don't know Brother Malcolm personally. I know his, you know, I believe I met him because I was kind of young in those days when my mother joined the nation. Now, <clears throat> this is my mother's uh, donation book. It's also, you know, like a registration book also. This book is 1947. I was born in 1946. While she was carrying me, she was going, getting taught, going through the meetings. And while I was in her stomach, I was listening. You know, we hear uh, what we want to hear. But I was hearing it. And then when I got old enough to, you know, when she had me and we, she started going to the, to the temple. Because at that time they called it the temple. She took, she took me. Now her brother, my mother's brother, was, was very, very close to Malcolm and his whole family, Brother Wilford. And uh, my mother was too, my grandmother, and my mother's sister who went to St. Louis. She was living in St. Louis, but she joined up and they started the mosque or the temple in St. Louis. And uh, she was a, she made, my aunt made clothing. And my mother would tell me about, you know, her times when she was in the nation. Now she took me, she took me out of the nation when I was very young. And she didn't let me attend the University of uh, Islam. I, I went to public school. And it's a personal reason why she stopped going, because she was very young. When she, when she uh, had my brother, she was 15 or 16. My brother was four years older than me. And she had me at a... Uh, I believe it was around 18 or something like that. She was still a teenager. And uh, so uh, she continued to go to the temple, but had a fallout with her brother. And some of the brothers in there, you know, because like, like uh, what Sinetta was saying, he was saying, we, we, you know, just because they're in the temple don't mean they're perfect. Uh, you know, because we had four or five hundred years of slave masters brainwashing us. He held us back from ed education. From not even, we couldn't even read, we couldn't even play our music at one time. We couldn't beat the drums or nothing. So, this has an effect on us, 
you know. And so, uh, this video here I'm dedicating to Brother Sinetta because it's Savior's Day. It's, it's the month of Savior's Day. And he's holding up the right uh, pillar. And I want to say this about Brother Malcolm. He was saying that Brother Malcolm omitted his mistakes and he played the he played the uh, audio of Brother Malcolm. And uh, apologizing to uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But see, what the biggest mistake Brother Malcolm made, the biggest was going over to the enemy and snitching. I mean, he we was what he was saying was untrue, unlies. I mean, they were lies. But uh, brothers who never did join in the Nation of Islam didn't like the dis disciplinary measures and the code of conduct that the, that the nation had. And uh, so they, you know, stopped being black nationalists and so forth because they want to do, uh, they don't like morality. You know, they want to do uh, other than right, other than righteous. That's right. See, the main thing Elijah was pushing was righteousness. To be upright, to be morally upright, because he know that this country was so corrupt that the corruption was going to rub off on us. You see? And when, when uh, Malcolm, he started battling with his personal demons. And then you got Wallace D. Muhammad talking. You know, a couple of Wallace brothers was against their daddy. Talking to Elijah. I mean, talking to uh, Malcolm. I believe then uh, Wallace turned, uh, Wharf Dean turned turncoat and was trying to get to Malcolm just like he got to got the Farrakhan and uh, so maybe next video I might play some some little clips from what Sinetta was saying but today uh, we're going to take you on a journey man uh, like I said I'm retired I could do this all day seven days a week every now and then I stop I might go out shovel the snow cut the grass or something tend to my garden I got I'm growing when it, I'm trying to build on my garden also but it's winter and uh, I'm trying to get a greenhouse going so I could grow all through the winter but it's gonna take time and a little money when I talk about cash like I'm not trying to knock, tell you not to get money. What I'm telling you is money is a tool. And if you want to, you can free your people with it. You know, it's a movie called The Stick Up Kids. The Stick Up Kids. Now, I applaud that movie because these brothers, you know, they were hustlers and whatever. But then, the uncle, I think he was a moor or something, but he was kicking some knowledge up on them, and they turned around. It was in, lo located in New York, the same place Sinetta is. Yeah, see, New York brothers, they kind of like, they slick, you know, they hustlers, you know, more so than Detroit. Detroit is a blue collar, and we hustle too, but we work and hustle. We work out at the, out at the fa factory, and we hustle out there, see, and then come back, 
and hustle in the hood. But New York is a is a showtown. It's a it's an international, more of an international flavor. And you know, it's more of an entertainment type center. And it's a business. And it's also Jew town. Jew got a heavy influence. See. So in Detroit, they got a little influence on us, but this is where the Nation of Islam started at, you know. So it's some deep seeds planted here. Now when Malcolm, getting back to Malcolm, when he went to the, the news, Malcolm went to the news, man, to the, to the news. That's just like, you know, Farrakhan going to uh, Phil Donahue. So, so uh, nowadays when you go to like Phil Donahue, Barbara Waters and all them, they can twist, put a spin on what you're saying by editing, you know, because you're only going to get so many minutes to get your point across, so many seconds really. Then you got to go to a commercial and then if you, if you don't place your words exactly right, you're going to come across uh, real bad. So just like Khalid. Khalid shouldn't have never went on field down here. You know. Because he, he, he didn't have enough time to uh, really get into the meat of the matter. So, uh, but anyway, Malcolm went to he went to uh, whatever news news they had back then. It was just, you know, said things he shouldn't say. You know, it should have been kept in-house. And it, plus it wasn't true. It was just a, a moment that I know Warf, I don't know for sure, but I, I feel like North Wharf Dean was the one that told him that he, you know, set him up to go there. You know, Wharf Dean, y'all need to do, uh, they got some videos. Well, this is Black Light saying, I'm going to cut it for right now, but stay tuned.